Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. Today is day number three of the 12 days of Christmas, a video series where I'll be sharing with you one new Squarespace customization tutorial every single day until December 12th. For today's video, I have something really exciting to share with you we'll be looking at how we can create collapsible form sections in Squarespace. Now, the cool thing about this trick is that it's something that you're gonna be able to implement whether you're working with 7.0, with 7.1, with the classic editor, or 7.1 with Fluid Engine. This is the perfect solution for those client projects where you have forms that have lots of fields and you want to keep things a little bit cleaner and not have everything showing up at the same time. So if this is something that you wanna learn how to do, keep on watching. So I'm starting out with a 7.1 side and I'm going to be using here this little form block that I have that is actually not that little. So you can see how I have a lot of fields in this form and it's just not looking that great. So what I want to do here is I want to collapse this section and this section that we have in here. So the way that we're going to do this is by basically using underlying fields as sort of the trigger for what content is going to be hidden and which content is going to be shown. So let me show you here how I have the field set up inside my form before we jump into the code. So if I take a look here inside my form fields, you can see how I have the underline selected to add just like this little title for personal information to sort of name the different sections that I have split in the form. Of course, you can decide to just leave that underline blank too if you wanted to, um, but I prefer to keep something in there because we're going to be styling it kind of like an accordion block where you have like a little symbol on the side so that it's very easy for people to see that that section is actually clickable and that there's going to be more information hidden within it. So here we have this personal information section and then I have a couple of fields and then I have about your project and then I have a couple of fields and then I have another section in here, additional information, and then I have a couple of fields. So it doesn't really matter how many sections you wanna have in here. The important thing to keep in mind in here is that whenever you want to create a new section, you need to have a line field at the top of all of the other um, like fields or anything else that you wanna have in here that are supposed to be collapsed. So that is going to be what the browser is going to look for after we apply our script. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that code is actually going to look like. So I'm going to go in here into settings, advanced, code injection. And then one thing to keep in mind about this customization is that it works with jQuery, which means that you need to have your jQuery library loaded on the site. So that basically means that you need to have a code that looks like this or something similar. Sometimes it says ajax.googleappy, so that one works as well. So if you already have one of those, and if you're working with Squarespace plugins, you probably have that code somewhere in there, so you don't need to have it again. But if you don't have it, make sure to grab it from the code that comes with this tutorial. All right, so once you have that in place, we're going to go into the footer area and I'm going to just paste the code that I have copied to my clipboard and I'm going to walk you through what it says. So I have my little code in here and basically what this is doing is that it's going to look for those underlying containers. So these ones, if we take a quick look here through the inspect element tool, we're going to see, where is that? Okay, here we go. So here you can see that if I stand over that underlying field, you can see what, that I'm highlighting it here on the screen. So this one has a couple of classes. We have form, item, section, and underline. So basically what I'm looking for is that particular type of container that we have here. So for item and underline, I'm not really using the section class in there. It doesn't really matter. The important part is that I'm looking for those underlying sections so that I can differentiate that from any other type of field that I have in the form. So I'm looking for any underlying container or element that I have in there. And then once that element is clicked, what is going to happen is that from that container until the next underlying container, everything is going to be sliding. So either to show or to hide. So here you can see that if that applies, so once I save this, what's gonna happen is that everything that goes from this container that we have in here, everything else that is in between this underline and this underline is going to get collapsed. And then the same thing happens here. So between this one and this one is going to get collapsed. And then from this one onwards, until it finds another underline, everything is going to get collapsed. But that event is only going to happen once we click on the underline. So let's go ahead and save this to see what's gonna happen. 
So here you can see how everything looks exactly the same right now. But now if I send over this and click on it, you can see how all of a sudden all of the fields that I have in between this underline and this underline disappear. So if I click it again and click it once more, you can see how it continues to hide and show because that's what this slight toggle function does. It basically hides what is showing and shows what is hidden. So here you can see that again, if I click on about your project, everything else gets hidden and then additional information, everything gets hidden. Now, of course, I don't want everything to show at first. I actually want to hide things and then I'll click, I want to show things. So in order to make that happen, we're actually going to move on to CSS to be able to set things up in a way that everything that we want to have hidden is hidden from the get go and then on click, it gets shown. So let's go ahead and head over to our custom CSS window over here. And then what we need to do here is basically set a display none for everything that we have in between these underlines. So let's go ahead and take this step by step. I'm going to first look for the way that we're going to target those underlines and then select everything else that comes after it until the next one. So here I'm going to go back into that container for the underline. I'm just going to start with the second one. It's going to happen. The same thing is going to happen for the first one and the third one. I'm just looking at the second one here. So I want to use that class of form item and underline because I know that these ones are specific for the underline field or line field. I keep saying underline, but it's the line field. Um, so let's just go ahead and use those two classes. So I'm going to target form item underline. Now, what I want is to hide everything that we have in here that is not an underline. So here, because everything is sitting next to each other or underneath each other, all of these elements that we see in here are siblings, which means that in order to select siblings, we need to use a very specific selector and that selector to be able to select everything that comes after the element that we're standing on is the little squiggly line here. So this one is going to help us select everything that comes after that thing that we're mentioning here at the beginning. So now if I were to do this, so I want to select anything that is sitting after the underline, and then I were to set that to display none, what's going to happen is that I'm only going to see that first element that I have up here because everything else gets hidden. So what I want to add now is a little exception because I don't want to hide the other underlying sections. I want those sections to show because all of those are going to be clickable, not just the first one. So right now, if I were to do this, you can see how everything shows only for this section. So it definitely defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do here. So what I want to do is I want to select everything that is after the underline that is not also an underline. So I'm going to be using here the not selector and I'm going to select the form item underline. So once I do that, you can see how now everything that we have inside the form is getting hidden except the other underline elements that we have here. So that means that now I'm able to click on any of them and all of the fields are going to show because of the script, because we have everything hidden with CSS. Once we click, we show it. And then once it's shown, if we click again, we hide it. All right. So now that we have the base of how everything is going to work here, let's go ahead and take this to the next level. I want the first field to always show everything because I feel like collapsed this way. It doesn't really look like a form. So I want the fields from personal information to show. So what that means is that our selector is actually going to get a little bit more complex than what it is right now. So basically what we need to do is now exclude this first element that we have in here or this first area underline, whatever you want to call it. We want to exclude this from this code so that the fields within this area up here always show and only these ones get collapsed. Now, in order to be able to exclude this first field, we need to find something inside the HTML that can help us differentiate this one from the other two. So let's go ahead and take a quick look through the inspect element tool here. All right. So 
Here we have the first field. We have the class of form item, section, and underline. If we take a look at the next underline, we can see that we have the classes form item, section, and underline. And then if we take a look at the third one, form item, section, underline. So through classes, we're not going to be able to point to the first one because all of the classes are exactly the same for all three fields. Now, that being said, you can see that we have an ID for each of these fields that is different from the rest. So here you can see that we have section and then just a bunch of characters and everything. This one ends in 208. And then here we have, where's the other one here? This one ends in 8212E and then this one ends in 7AB498C. So what we could do is use this ID to be able to point to the browser that this first one does not get included inside this selector, does not have that display non applied to the fields that are after that specific underline. So let's go ahead and try that out. I'm going to grab the ID from here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use once again, the not selector. So I'm going to exclude the underline. So the form item underline from all of the ones that I have inside the form, I'm going to exclude the one that has the ID that I just copied. You can see how now for that first underline, I can actually see the fields and for the other two, the fields are collapsed. So I need to click on them to be able to see what comes next. All right, so this is pretty much it in terms of how you can set up collapse sections for your forms. However, I want to keep going because I still want to make a couple of additional tweaks. Now, the first one that I want to make here is that I want to stop this first section from collapsing if people click on it. Because right now, if I were to click on it, you can see how it's going to collapse the fields. Now, you may want that to happen, but I personally do not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this first underline from actually being clickable so that these fields never get hidden. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to target that first section. So I'm going to reuse that ID that I already know belongs to that specific field in that specific container. And I'm going to set in here pointer events none. And what that is going to do is it's going to stop me from being able to interact with that field that we have in there. Even though the other ones are still collapsible and expandable, I'm not going to be able to do anything with that first one. Now, another modification that I want to do here is that I actually want to make the cursor of these two sections show up as the little hand when you have a link in there, because I think that that's going to help make things very clear that these sections are clickable. So I'm going to go ahead and target my underlying sections. I'm going to grab this little selector that we have in here. And once again, because I don't want this first section to collapse, it doesn't really make sense to change the cursor on this one to make it look like it's clickable when it really isn't. So I'm going to go ahead and include that exception once more. So I'm going to select the underlines that I have inside the form that are not this particular one. And then I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. And so once I do that, you can see that if I go over either of these two sections down here, my cursor changes to the little hand. But then if I go over to the top one, nothing is happening. All right. And now additional to this, I also want to include a little like symbol or just something here on the side that makes it even more evident that these two sections are clickable. So I'm going to go ahead and inspect these sections here. And basically what I want to do is I want to add a pseudo element. So with the pseudo element, I'm going to be creating that little symbol or background image, whatever it is that I'm going to place on this side of the container. So I'm going to go ahead and now select that title container that we have here, and I'm going to attach that pseudo element to it. So I'm going to start with my target container, which is going to be the title. So I'm going to go ahead and write in here title. Now I don't want to target everything that has the title class across course space because I don't really know how global that class is. I want to make it very specific for the underlying fields that I have here, excluding the first one. So once more, I'm going to go ahead and reuse this little selector that is going to target all the underlines that I have inside the form, except the specific one that I'm targeting through that ID. So I'm going to add that to my selector here. And then let's just do a quick check here. So if I were to add a background color, you can see how only these two get modified and this one doesn't get affected. So that's perfect. 
Now let's go ahead and create our pseudo element. So I'm going to go ahead and because I want the symbol on this side, I'm going to be creating an after pseudo element. And then as for the content, I'm simply going to be using a little plus sign. You can see how automatically after I do that, the little plus sign shows up in here, which is great, but I actually want it on this side. So in order to make that happen and make it very easy to show up on the right side, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be turning the title container into a flex container so that I can easily move that symbol to the right side. So I'm going to reuse my selector here. I'm just going to put it up here. So I'm targeting the exact same thing. I'm just not targeting the pseudo element because I don't want to affect that directly. I need to target the container that is holding that element. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to display flex. And then I'm going to set here justify content space between. And once I do that, you can see how now this symbol gets pushed over all the way to the right side and we have that separation going in here. And from this point on, it's pretty much all about just styling things. So let's go ahead and add a couple more styles to the plus sign. I'm going to set the font weight for this to bold. And then maybe let's do font size like 2EM. That looks pretty good. And then I actually think I want to style the title a little bit too. So I'm going to go back into my title selector and I'm going to add in here font weight. I'm going to set this to bold as well. And then I think I'm going to transform this to uppercase. So text transform uppercase. All right, and that is looking pretty good. Now, as you can see, the first field didn't get selected in here because we're working with this little snippet or this little selector that is excluding that first one from the styles. So what we could do here is either target that specific underline and then restyle it, or we can move things out of this container. So for example, the font weight and the text transform, we can go ahead and move them out from this selector and put them in a different one that doesn't include the exception of the first field. I actually think it's going to be easier to just duplicate the style. So I'm just going to go ahead and select here. Actually, we already have it here. We have the ID but we need to target the title container instead to be able to apply the style. So let's do font weight, bold. And then what's the other thing? Text transform. Text transform, uppercase, like so. And now everything looks the same, except that this one doesn't have the little plus sign because again, in my situation, it doesn't make sense to have it in here because I don't want these fields to be collapsible or expandable or anything. I just want them to show at all times. And now in case you're wondering, yes, you can absolutely apply this same style to forms that are inside light boxes. However, the code for the script is slightly different. So make sure to check out the code that comes with this tutorial on the blog. And there you have it. That's how you can create collapsible sections inside forms in Squarespace. I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful. I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the rest of this series. And I will see you tomorrow.